Welcome back to the show guys, you're joining me, Jason Pizzino, on my channel here on YouTube, Jason Pizzino. Today's video, let's start talking about 2020 and how we're going to invest our money into 2020 with $2,000. So how I would invest my $2,000 in 2020. It's late in 2019 at the moment, end of November, so it gives us four, five, six weeks to get our act together, get a plan together. I don't like doing these things right on the New Year's Day. It's just stupid, you know? Like, that's a whole holiday period. You're basically winding down. Now is the time to start getting, you know, getting your, your shit together, ready for the next year. So that's why I want to talk about this today. And I should mention, before I get started, this is not financial advice, yada, 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 do your own research. Obviously, that's being serious. I just wanted to shorten that down because you know the drill if you've already watched these sorts of videos before. Having said that, I want to throw up a few extra, hopefully, nuggets of gold in here that you wouldn't see on other videos. At least try and explain it in a way that hopefully makes a little more sense and gives a little bit more depth. Because my, like my, you guys, myself, I've watched several of these videos now. It's something that interests me, but I always feel like there's just a tiny little bit lacking and I want to make that a little bit clearer in this video. So the way I want to structure the video, just so you've got an idea, is I'll run through the, the basics first, you know, your risk tolerance, how old are you, what most investors do, all those sort of number things that you tend to hear in those videos, but I won't spend too much time on those. I'll jump into, say, around the next top 10-ish. Uh, investments that people tend to like the look of things like your stocks and property and ETFs and crypto and all that sort of stuff and at the same time give you my opinion on those and finally I'll mention how I am investing in them myself and I'll also give uh, you know I'll give an example for people who are still in a job how I would potentially structure myself in that way if I was still in a job Myself, I'm not working for someone else. I just invest full time and I just find a way to continue living, to continue educating myself and to keep getting better with my investments. So with that said, let's jump into the video and jump onto the first topic. That being smashing the like button, subscribe and comment down below. Appreciate it because it obviously helps the video and the channel. This is all educational purposes only. I have said that. I want to quickly run through the other things, that being what you would normally hear on other videos, things like your risk tolerance. What is your risk tolerance? How do you find out about that? A lot of these things I'm going to keep quite simple and if there are questions that you've got and you want more explanation on them, it's so easy just to go, how do I identify my risk tolerance in Google? That gives you a nice step-by-step -step guide. Rather than me filling the whole video with going through each of those, it's pretty straightforward. Your risk tolerance, if you've never invested before, the only way you're really going to find out is getting into an investment yourself. So with that also said, a, a safe-ish way to keep yourself in the game essentially is have that total amount of money that you've got, in this case we're talking $2,000, and divide that up into 10 parts, okay? So at least you've got ammunition to keep going at different investments if some of them fail. Having said that, I'm going to talk about it in a different way as well. Other things that are involved in your risk tolerance is also your age. So are you in your 20s, in your mid-20s, in your 30s? What sort of life do you look at having in the next 20, 30, 40 years? Are you in your 50s? Are you coming close to retirement? Do you have a family in your early 20s? Do you have a family in your 30s? Like there's so many different things that come into that which will affect how you decide to invest. I'm going to talk about it from my point of view and how I've done it later in the video, of course. But that's something to keep in mind and those things go hand in hand, your risk tolerance and most likely your age. Not always, but generally your age. The younger you are, the higher your risk tolerance because if you fail, you've got plenty of time to make your money back and you know hit the next investment again. We also know that higher risk generally equals higher return. That's why crypto was such a hot thing in 2017. 2018 showed the high volatility and the high risk that's involved if you don't know what you're doing. And Subsequently, big losses happen after 2017 in pretty much every single crypto. So a way to mitigate that risk is to have a backup account. Have three to six months worth of savings there if this is the only thing you're doing. If you have another job, then it's probably not as big of a deal, but you still want to have a backup account. When I was in a job, I wanted to have at least $5,000 in my account. And that's probably small for a lot of people, but my job was paying basically jack shit. And five grand was a fair chunk of my salary back 
13 or so years ago. Uh, five grand could cover things like if I had something wrong with the car, if I needed to get a whole new crappy car just to get me around, anything to do in the house, you know, kitchen, the whole water system, uh, you know, fridge, whatever, any of those things go, I could make do and continue on. So that was my number back then. Now I like it a bit more over 10,000. Not that anything's actually changed, you know, it's still the same deal, a car, if anything goes in the house, and anything medically related, which is pretty much okay here in, in Oz. But essentially you want to have that back up in case anything goes wrong because that just drops the stress level and that allows your mind to be clear when you're making the next investment decision. You don't want to be making an investment decision when you are stressed trying to make more money to pay back things which have already been paid for. This needs to be coming from a clear place. And the last thing I'll throw on that is that most investors don't do better than the general market. I'm sure you've seen that before as well. Seriously, if you're just typing into Google how do investors rate against the stock market generally comes up with about the stock market does eight to ten percent per annum regular investors do about five if they're lucky take inflation off that so it's about three percent you're left with about two percent and that leads me on to my next point being the first investment being banks banks you could possibly get around two percent per annum so <clears throat> if you're an investor and you're in five percent and you're slogging your guts out to try and get this per year take off inflation of 3%, basically left with two. You could have left the money in the bank at two. Fair enough, inflation's on that two and you're left with negative one, which sucks as well. But a matter of a few percent a year, I don't think that gets anyone excited to want to invest their hard earned money. Definitely not me. And I'm not one of those channels that are gonna start promoting, putting your money in the bank at 2% and just sort of living out your everyday job until that 2% compounds. That's not the strategy for me. I'm far more high risk. But on top of that risk, I'd like to mitigate that by investing in myself. That is another one of the points. That is another one of the investment vehicles as, I don't know, maybe lame as it sounds. It's really not that lame. Investing in yourself mitigates the risk because you start to educate, you learn more, and you have a clearer understanding of how these investment investment vehicles work and where might be a little more safe to put your money or somewhere that is more comfortable for you. That leads me on to crypto. And crypto is the other place that I like to put my money. They're the top two that I do. I let you know this at the beginning of the video. Invest in myself and in crypto. So crypto, you probably have already seen several times on my channel already if you are a viewer. It is something I've been in for coming up three years now. The more I go into it, the more I'm educating myself and the lower the risk feels for me to be able to put my money into different cryptos. That being said, it does take a fair bit of time. There are many channels out there which say it's quite easy. On one hand, sure, you can just put it into the top couple of cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and if you really like Ripple, you know, those, those top three. They've been around for quite some time and they continue to produce results in the long term. But if you want to get into the smaller cryptos, cryptos that kind of react like penny stocks, then you need to be putting the time into it. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that is the truth of it. You need to be putting the time into researching and learning about these things if you want to make the returns. Moving on to the next point, stocks, same deal. I think you really need to be putting your time into stocks if you were going to make that a, an investment opportunity for yourself. Things like diversified portfolios, obviously, uh, and dividend producing portfolios. You need to be doing your research on those because sure enough, a stock can produce a dividend, which means you know, it'll pay you every three months, every quarter, essentially, every six months. Uh, but if the price is on the decline, so if you haven't learned about your technical analysis and the price is declining, then what's the point of giving the, getting the dividend when the actual price of the underlying stock is declining? You might as well wait until you see a turnaround in the market conditions or you see a bottoming pattern, then getting in so that you've saved yourself the hassle and the losses on the way down. That's my view on it. That's how I'm playing crypto because essentially the markets are quite similar when you've learned about technical analysis. One moves faster than the other, but crypto being the faster and stocks being slightly slower. Unless it's penny stocks because they're new companies. Crypto is new. They act like a young bull. They respond quickly. They drag on and they move in these really fast um, actions. So that leads me on to the next point being the ETFs. They have talked about a fair amount online that I've seen as well. And I'm just going to basket all of those in together. That being the stocks, the dividend paying stocks, the growth stocks, the ETFs. You basically all have to invest in the same way. You know, set yourself up with a broker, 
put your money into the broker, buy those and hold them there. I'm going to basket all those together and then move on to the next point. And the next point being your superannuation fund or for the Americans 401k. That's basically your retirement plan. I see this as a backup plan. So personally, I don't like to invest a whole lot of my earnings into it now unless it's for different tax reasons, you know, tax breaks and all that sort of stuff. That I'm not going to get into, but it's definitely something worthwhile to look into after, my opinion of course, after I've made a nice chunk of change in some of these more faster moving markets because I've educated myself in them and I'm not just taking massive gambles on them. That is what I would do with the superannuation or the 401ks because like I said, tax breaks and they can be helpful down the other end. It's just kind of like diversifying yourself a little bit and you give yourself that extra play, that long-term play. And for me, I like seeing it as a as an experiment over the course of my life. You know, that, that kind of makes me do it, makes me put some money in when I've made my big gains. And then I just like to see the compounding effects over a lifetime. This is all just an experiment at the end of the day and this is how I want to play it. I'm sharing it with you. Hopefully, you know, you find some value from it and maybe it changes your mind a little bit to, to play the game a little bit differently. Maybe to get a little more involved in your investments as opposed to jumping between different tips and YouTube videos and doing different things. I don't know what you do, obviously. Just a few more to go. One being businesses. I haven't invested in businesses as such because I generally invest in myself. Crypto or stock markets, like I had traded in the past, uh, CFDs, futures, stocks. Property was a big one for me and property development. So businesses are another one. It's kind of like flipping houses from what I understand. So again, do your, do your own research on that. But if it's something that resonates with you more where you're buying something physical or it could be an online business and you're able to improve the value of that because you can see from their, basically their finances that they're not doing too well and you can see where you can add value, that can be a great way to produce bigger returns than sitting your money in stocks or in, in the bank. It's kind of like a side project. That's the way I would see those sort of things as a side project at first if you've got a job. Otherwise, it is definitely a full-time job as well. It's like, like I said, flipping houses. Moving on to that, buying a property, that's something that I've done in the past. Buy the property, you can see where you can add value, you can see the returns if you were to add some value, and you can see the growth in the market. Maybe you're buying an undervalue as well as being able to split the block, you know, the land subdivision, maybe you can raise the house, build in underneath, Maybe you can build out the back of the, the land as well, looking at the zoning. They're, they're all things that I've done before and I class that under renovations, but also property development. You're developing the property from one lot to five lots. And that is another way that makes a big chunk of change, but it takes time. The last one that I have done took about two and a bit years. Yes, six figure returns, but it takes a fair bit of time and things can go wrong and they often do go wrong and market conditions you just cannot predict in three years time. You can have a fair idea of what you think it will do, but you just never know. That was my last one there, property development. So with all of those things listed, how I would look at it if I was still in a job, I would be looking at these few things. First being investing in myself. Do I wanna keep staying in a job? I mean, that, that comes down to, do you like your job? What do you do? All that sort of stuff. Personally, I wanted to get out, so I started investing in myself, investing a lot of money. I could say some of it was wasted, of course, because you just don't know which courses you're getting into, but I needed to go through those lessons to spend the money. So investing in myself was a huge one. Next thing I'll do is, if I'm still in a job, is start to put some money into the superannuation only because in most cases that I have researched, there's some tax breaks involved and sometimes the employer matches the superannuation. In Australia, superannuation is compulsory. At least that's my understanding. Every job I've ever been in, they've always paid superannuation. And it's a minimum of 9.5% of your salary. So you're getting 50 grand a year, it's just under five grand a year extra. Might as well do something with that. And we have the opportunity to make an SMSF. So create a self-managed super fund. That costs money, and it costs money to run yourself every year. But if you've got your money in a superannuation fund, you still have to pay fees to those guys to essentially put your money into different stocks. So personally, I want to look after it myself and manage it myself. Yes, I have to pay the, the fees and you know, the upkeep costs, but that's something I'm willing to do with my super, uh, yeah, my self-managed super fund. So if that's interesting to you, obviously look into it. Americans, 401k, maybe you have a similar thing like that where you can manage it yourself. And lastly, if all of those are done, my 
take on it is crypto. So that is where I would be putting my $2,000. Got to do the research on the crypto. This video is long enough and it's not a video to be getting into the individual cryptos. I have several of those on my channel already. I'll leave links up here wherever it comes up or in the description for other videos that I've talked about different cryptocurrencies. But essentially they're the three areas there. I've got $2,000, I've got a grand, I would split this 50-50 up. I'm not interested in splitting it into 10 different lots to look after my money management. I'm gonna go a grand at least into some education because I wanna learn more as quickly as possible so that I can invest smarter. And then I would put another grand into crypto. That could just be as simple as just buying Bitcoin and holding it there or buying Bitcoin and Ethereum and just learning how to use the wallets. But essentially, it's that simple. I'd be putting my $2,000 into those areas. Learning about myself more because it's going to benefit me in the future. Once I've learned that knowledge and applied it, I can't lose it. I can't lose it. I can use it as much as possible and I can use that to earn me more money. That's why I think that's the best investment in myself. Then, because I've done that, cryptocurrency. So, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know in the comments down below where you would put your $2,000 for 2020 if you had 2000 if you got 20,000 what are you gonna do with 20,000 if you've got less what are you gonna do with that if you follow me on Instagram you'll see where my dollar cost averaging is and if you also follow me on Instagram you'll see what I'm investing into myself like what I'm actually doing so go follow me there remember to like share and subscribe if you found this video useful it helps the channel out a lot and I hope to see you at the next video so until then remember have more fun and get more done